everyone i am dr sendil kumar i am going to talk about few interesting situations in groin hernia surgery uh, first one is uh, amyans hernia as everyone knows about amyans hernia it is appendix within the hernial sac uh, it has got uh, four types uh, amyans type one is uh, a normal appendix within the hernial sac as so a type 2 is appendicitis type 3 is appendicular perforation with abscess type 4 is uh, other associated uh, intra abdominal pathologies here this is amyans you can see it is formed a sliding component in the indirect inguinal hernia on the right side and this appendix needs to be reduced uh, brought into the peritoneal cavity because if you divide the sac uh, if the appendix gets injured then there is a chance of mess uh, being infected if you place it uh, so that uh, if there is any injury to the appendix better avoid placing the mess uh, during the same surgery if it is appendicitis perforation or abscess uh, first we have to treat the appendicular perforation and abscess then you have to come back to the hernia surgery after 3 to 6 months uh, and this is how we, re we reduce the appendix and the rest of the dissection will be same like regular hernia surgery this is a spigillin hernia with a uh, left side inguinal hernia sometimes if you come across a hernia like this you can use a large mesh or you can use two uh, different meshes to cover um, spigillin hernia and the inguinal hernia by a tap approach that will actually reduce the cost of the procedure or e tap also now available that also can be uh, used to, to treat these hernias in a female hernia there is no difference only difference is uh, uh, the uh, cord structure is replaced by the round ligament and the dissection will be same like a male uh, patient sometimes if the peritoneum is densely adherent to the round ligament uh, sometimes you may need to sacrifice the round ligament and finally you can place a mess like this and another uh, situation where you, you come across is a large uh, slider hernia you can appreciate this is a direct hernia with the sigmoid as a slider in this case after reduction of the content if you place an additional port to pull the sigmoid colon which has gone into the peritoneum because if you leave the content again it will go back to the hernial sac so if you place an additional instrument to keep the reduced content intraperitoneally this will be very helpful and this is how the sac is uh, reduced and uh, if you leave this uh, it will go back into the sac so that uh, we place on additional port in these situations to keep the reduced content inside the peritoneal cavity and then the dissection will be same and you can use um, some uh, pressure from outside to keep the reduced content uh, inside the peritoneal cavity this is the dissection after uh, reduction of the content and uh, this is the final appearance and we place a mesh and so close it this is another case of uh, irreducible femoral hernia you can see this is the content uh, momentum is going into the femoral hernial defect we are trying to reduce the momentum from the hernial sac part of it came and part of it uh, didn't come and you can see it is lying between the lacunar ligament and the external iliac vein and sometimes uh, if it is irreducible you can even divide the lacunar ligament horizontally uh, to uh, reduce the content this is the actually final picture after the reduction of the hernial content and you can see in this case there is a small obturator hernia also that also will be taken care by the mesh which we are going to place it finally there was a small amount of uh, momentum which uh, could not be reduced in this irreducible femoral hernia we made a very small incision of about 2 cm to remove this uh, content, uh, disconnected contents which is lying within the femoral sac. And finally, you can appreciate we have placed a mesh to cover all the defects and uh, repaired it. Regarding the management of uh, uh, recurrent hernia, is ta previous uh, lap repair failure is opened by open approach, previous open approach failure is repaired by the laparoscopy approach. That is the dictum. But with experience, we can manage. Uh, previous laparoscopic uh, hernia surgery recurrence uh, by laparoscopy again. So this is a lap recurrence. You can see the previously placed mesh which is small in size and you can appreciate the medial recurrence and this is the defect after reduction of the contents. We make an incision and we take the mesh along the peritoneum in uh, lower flap of the peritoneum and you can see completely dissected hernia. You can see pre-peritoneal completed uh, dissection. I can see the peritoneum inferior flap has got the mesh has been placed during previous surgery. Now after that we place a mesh 
and we will close the peritoneal defect. You can appreciate uh, the lower flap contains the previously placed mesh. So that, uh, that is the peritoneal closer without any rent we have closed the peritoneum and uh, this is the video small video you can appreciate and uh, this is the addition you can appreciate the mesh which is there and uh, all the additions needs to be released and we are trying to reduce the content also it uh, the content it was very difficult to reduce the content because there were a lot of additions uh, within the sack all were carefully uh, 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 divided and we could be able to reduce the content after reduction of the content uh, the uh, next step is uh, peritoneal incision in this case we have to make a liberal peritoneal incision so that uh, we will be starting our dissection in the uh, normal play first you have to start the dissection in the area where there is less fibrosis where the planes are very clear then you can go to uh, the area which we have already used it so now we have started our dissection on the medial side away from the mess and uh, we could be able to uh, identify the plane and then we are coming above them uh, making an incision actually this is proper uh, incision for inguinal hernia surgery we are making above the previously uh, placed mess then this is hook dissection you can appreciate the uh, entire uh, mess uh, which was placed uh, during previous surgery is reduced along with the lower flap and uh, the trick here is to stay on the mess you feel the mess and stay on the mess so that you will not be going away uh, from the mess to some dangerous areas so the carefully the entire uh, mess is uh, uh, actually peeled off from the surrounding structures carefully and the dissection is widened uh, thoroughly once you cross the area of uh, mess then uh, the dissection will be very easy and it is more, here you can appreciate there is hardly any fibrosis once you cross the area of uh, misplacement then you can nicely uh, dissect the other areas and the beautifully dissected field you can appreciate this and we are placing a large size mesh to cover the defect cover the recurrence so this is a stitch to the corpus ligament and you can appreciate since it is a medial recurrence we have placed the mesh with very good overlap a very good actually uh, extension of the mesh beyond the midline onto the left side and you can see the lower flap uh, contains mesh that is lifted and uh, sutured to the upper flap to form the peritoneal closer and this is the final appearance and sometimes a very large obstructed inguinal hernia you can see this is uh, this patient has got a hernia which is extending up to almost uh, the knee level and uh, this is a large hernia where the contents were irreducible uh, uh, and the small bowel was the content This is a bilateral hernia after reduction we could not be able to completely bring the uh, contents into the peritoneal cavity so further if you pu pull too much inside there is a chance that uh, we might injure the bowel so we can make a small incision uh, to, uh, to divide the constriction within the uh, sac so that the content will be completely reduced and after reduction of the content this is a dissected area I can appreciate we have nicely dissected the entire area it is a bilateral hernia and we could be able to repair the uh, hernia by using two meshes and final peritoneal closer you can appreciate another uh, thing which we have to be very careful is prevention of infection and uh, management of uh, infection uh, you can see this is a mesh in infection case uh, we are actually making an incision to enter into the area there were a lot of pus that needs to be sucked out immediately and we have to take extreme caution in removing any mess so you use a ultrasonic dissector a vessel sealing device both are, uh, should be there available and you have to stay along the mess carefully remove each and every small small bits of the mess also can be completely removed so if you leave a small residual mess the patient will come with a sinus on uh, later period so you have to be very careful use suction nozzle use uh, ultrasonic dissector use vessel sealing device to carefully remove the entire mess and uh, during the mess removal we have to make sure that we are not injuring the uh, iliac vessels and the urinary bladder so entire mesh needs to be thoroughly uh, removed without leaving even a small residual part 
and after that you can give a final wash come thorough wash and you can keep a drain and come out we are concluding this video now and in this video i have discussed about management of difficult situations in laparoscopic inguinal hernia and other hernia surgeries i have discussed about amiens hernia management of left spinal hernia along with inguinal hernia female inguinal hernia left side large irreducible inguinal hernia with sigmoid colon as slider right recurrent inguinal hernia management following previous right laparoscopic repair right obstructed inguinal hernia managed by tap approach and also regarding the management of mesh infection if you like this video please subscribe and see you in the next video thank you very much